I got nightmares in my head, I fear Thoughts build up until I can't hear My mind fills up into a creature And it haunts me somewhere much deeper I got nightmares in my head, I fear Hello and welcome to True Crime Rocket Science, the most authentic voice in true crime. On Friday. To me, she seemed quite calm. She was sort of putting her coat down on the floor and sort of performing a, a yoga pose. It just seemed a bit odd at this time because um, obviously it's starting to get dark. Well, it's quite interesting. Last A last photo, last footage of Gaynor has been released and it shows her walking along St. Augustine Street at 4.01 p.m. Remember, the witness who said she saw Gaynor in the park, Rosie Richards, thought that that occurred at 4 p.m. Now, she may have been off by five minutes, but it's also possible that she was right and that this is the aftermath to that. But the question then is, how likely is that? In terms of the odds and what makes sense here, what likely happened? based on this new information. Before we get to that, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do. Uh, welcome to the many of you who have subscribed. If you're enjoying this analysis, please like, share, leave a comment. You can also hit the thanks button and let's get started. So remember we were told that a witness walking her dog last saw Gaynor in, in a park, in Western Park, doing yoga or what appeared to be yoga. And she thought it was 4 p.m. when that happened. One thing she also said was that it seemed strange to her because it was dark. And so one thing that you really get confirmation of, reinforcement, reinforcement of, is just how dark it was at 4 p.m. in this final footage of Gaynor. Now we know that Gaynor was still walking along St. Augustine Street at 4.01 p.m. At this point, she could have been anywhere from one or two to eight minutes from her destination to the park. That's assuming she was still on her way to the park. And so if you think about it, if you could kind of go back in time and you could follow her almost like a drone, would she have gotten herself to the river in about one or two minutes from this point? And I think maybe Rosie could perhaps give, a, give an assessment of how close she was when she saw gainer to this uh, spot where the CCTV captures her on St. Augustine's. Now, St. Augustine Street is probably one or two minutes walk from the River w Wensum, which is sort of on the, um, I think it's the uh, west side of the street. It kind of runs parallel. It's quite a big street running parallel to the direction of flow of the River Wensum. But another possibility is that Gaynor was already back from the park or perhaps heading home or heading somewhere to catch a bus. In the latest footage, we see a completely different Gaynor to the one we saw early in the day. She's not running. She's looking at shop signs, or she seems to be. She's fully clothed. We also see a man in this footage walking a short distance behind her. Of course, there are also pedestrians in front of her and passing her from the opposite direction. So I'm not sure we need to pay too much attention to that. In my previous video, someone made a comment about a nervous breakdown or a psychotic episode, which I pinned. And uh, one thing that I think is difficult with that, that, uh, that thought, that assessment, is I don't know how long something like that can last. I can imagine it lasting five minutes or ten minutes, but it's quite difficult to imagine it lasting for three hours. Although I wouldn't say it's impossible, just that it's quite difficult to have a complete nervous breakdown for such a long period of time. Not impossible, I just think it becomes a little bit less likely. And in this footage of her in St. Augustine Street, she doesn't seem flustered, she doesn't seem in a hurry. One reasonable question to ask is, was she supposed to meet someone on that street? Is that why she was looking in through the window? The other thing that I mentioned in the previous video had to do with impulsivity. Is she also kind of looking into shop windows in a little bit of a kind of a zombie phase? You know, she's, she's not quite there. Is that also kind of perhaps what's going on? I've got to say she looks to me quite 
compass meant as, as though she seems to know what's going on uh, from her gait, the way that she's walking. She doesn't seem to be drunk. She doesn't seem to be walking perfectly straight, but she also doesn't, it doesn't seem to be erratic either. It seems for all, tens- all intents and purposes normal. And that brings us back to this question is whether Gaynor was on her way to or from the park after this final footage, this final photo was captured of her at 4.01 p.m. What do you think? Well, taking our cue from law enforcement and where they are looking right now after six days and where Gaynor's belongings were found and the fact that her coat was found in the water and the last eyewitness that saw her in the park, and that law enforcement believes she's in the water, this does seem to make sense. In other words, that she went from this point to the park. Now, I do think another possibility that's hard to avoid is if she was in the park, she then came back onto the sort of urban fabric as it, as it, as it was, right, um, and was walking along the road. Could it be that somebody then took her back to the park perhaps someone who spotted her at the park and took her back to the park. The other thing that doesn't really make sense here is why would you remove some of your clothing only to put on a coat as well? And of course, we don't know exactly what items of clothing were removed. Was it shoes? Was it a shirt? What was actually removed? But in a basic sense, it doesn't quite make sense that she would remove clothing and then also have the coat on. One thing that I must admit worries me and something that has kind of stood out in the reporting is the word scattered. The fact that her belongings were apparently found scattered in the park. Again, it's hard to know how much to read into this without knowing the area that the belongings were found in, um, like how large an area was it and how were they found. And is it is scattered really the right word? If they were scattered from the one end of the park to the other, then the question then becomes, what is more likely that she scattered her own belongings, dropped a ring here, dropped her glasses there, dropped her mobile phone there, or that somebody else did that? It's also possible that someone may have thrown Gaynor's coat into the river. There is a area where the road goes over the river, a little bit further south, and that Gaynor's not, Gaynor's not in the river at all. But if we apply the lessons learned in the Nicola Bully case, I would say the first place to search exhaustively, the first place we need to try to exclude, is the river. Unfortunately, this is also the toughest assignment because of the volumes of rainfall that have fallen recently, not only increasing the flow and volume of water, but also the amount of debris divers have had to sift through. I'd also be very interested to know, did a lot of this rain fall before Friday the 8th or on Friday the 8th, or did it fall subsequent? If any of you that are listening to this video are from from Norwich or nearby the area, perhaps you can answer that question in the comments, unless it's been raining all along anyway. There are also important lessons we learned from the search for Nicola Bully in terms of how should a search be conducted in these sorts of conditions, and I'll be sharing those in the next analysis. Thank you for listening and I'll see you guys next time.